What's up you guys, Shardimus Prime here, doing another Hot Toys action figure review on the Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice Movie Masterpiece MMS 342 Batman 1-6 scale collectible figure. If you're trying to pick this up, you know you can get it! Big, big, big! Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com! Click the link in the description below! Pretty cool looking packaging over here, I like how we get the design of the bat suit right over here on the sides. You can't feel the texturing of it or anything, but you can see it right over there. You can can feel the spot varnishing of the Batman logo, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's a very similar packaging to the Armored Batman, of course. You can see the comparison right over there. I do think this one looks a little bit cooler, though, to be honest with you. Just a little bit shinier and, you know, I don't know. I just like the design of it a little bit more. Anyway, not much more on the side right over there or on the back. You just get all the warning stuff. And on this side, not much more going on. You get the BVS logo at the top. Then at the very bottom, not much going on. And we do the Hot Toys plot. There we go. And then you can see the bat flap right over there, looking pretty cool. And then there's all the people responsible for creating the figure. Then there's the figure inside. All right, let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's the new Hot Toys Batman figure out of the packaging, looking sick. I really like this Batman figure a lot. It is a little bit darker than I was expecting it to be, but I still think it looks really cool. I really like the suit. I really like this cape. This cape is really cool. I love how they have all this dirt and everything right over here. I don't know what this is made out of. I think it's just made out of polyester, but the suit is fairly durable. I think we get some really good durability with that suit, so we get a lot of posability with the figure. We get some very cool accessories as well, and I really... Oh man, it's just a cool looking Batman figure. Anyway, here's the base, very similar to what we'd seen with the armored Batman, and it looks really good. Once again, I really like how this orange and yellow looks in between the S right over here. I think that's great. Nice paint variation over here. Great sculpting, beautiful looking plaque. I like it. And then you can, again, lift this up right here, and you get the little kickstand buried inside. So just flip that up and then you put it in there and then that looks pretty sweet as well. Uh, unlike the other version, or the armored Batman anyway, I thought it was weird getting that figure on the stand. But because this is not as bulky of a figure, uh, you can see that that actually looks pretty cool. Uh, the Batman figure does not have his hands on right now, but yeah, that's a pretty sweet look. So here's where all the hands went. We get eight interchangeable hands with this figure, which is more than what we got with the armored Batman. Alright, we get a pair of fisted hands, we get a pair of relaxed hands right over here. We get a pair of trigger holding hands, which is great, so you can put the grapple gun or the grenade launcher in either the left hand or the right hand. We get an extra right hand for the brand over here, and then we get one extra right hand for the batterings. I wish we'd gotten an extra battering holding hand for the left side. That would have been pretty sweet. Uh, right over here, you can see that we get the same grenade launcher that we'd gotten with the armored Batman, so nothing really new over here. The stock pulls out. And we also get the two same extra grenades, so you get the gas grenade right over here, the kryptonian gas grenade, or the kryptonite gas grenade. Sorry, not kryptonian, but yeah. Anyway, you can see these look very good ones again and you can port that right in there and it just falls right out. We get this very cool grapple gun which I like a lot. This is really sweet. Look at all that little silver dry brushing over there. That's very cool. I like these a lot. Unfortunately the little extra collapsed grapples don't really go in there too well. I mean they they go in there fine but they just don't really stay in there too well. Like they just want to fall right out right after you put them in. And see now that I'm recording they're going to stay in just fine so that's a little frustrating. Uh, but you can port these in right over here so I think that's pretty sweet. You can do that. This one doesn't want to stay in there that well though. Now the zip lines do stay in here a little bit better but you can see this other grapple right here right there. It's all deployed. Looking really nice. Then we get the ones with the zip lines. I like this one a lot with the little squiggly zip line and everything. And that port's in there pretty well. You want to be careful with these. You don't want to break anything, right? But ah, that feels all loose. There it goes. Okay, now it's in there. So it doesn't fall right out very easily. But I like that one. I'll just... So that's pretty cool. Then you get this extended one over here. And that goes in very nicely as well. And you can get that, there it goes. Yeah, that's pretty sick too, I like that. This isn't bendy or anything, I'm not gonna try to bend it. It doesn't look like it's supposed to. Directions don't say you can, but yeah, very cool grapple gun. And then the grapple, or the gun holding hand, just to demonstrate how easy it is to put this in his hand. Uh, unlike the armored Batman, I had a whole lot of chewing and stuff like that, trying to get the grenade launcher in there, but this goes in there very easily. I like that a lot. Same thing with the grenade launcher, you know? This isn't very hard to get him to hold this at all, so I'm very happy with that. It's pretty sweet, you know, works very well, so I'm really happy with these. And the hands all look really cool, by the way. I really like how you have, you know, those brass knuckles on all of them. Nice wear. They all look great. Very, very well done with these hands. And they're very easy to interchange, unlike the other Batman figure. Oh, man, these are so much easier. I mean, just to demonstrate quickly over here, I mean, really, look at this. This is just 
bam, easy. And you can't articulate it without it coming off, you know, and rotate around and it's still on there. But moving on to the rest of the accessories, we get this brand and I think it looks really good. I like the silver dry brushing over it. It looks nice and it's very easy to put into the brand holding hand. And just get in here and go in between the fingers. So that's very nice. I dig that. And I love these batterings. We get four batterings. They're all identical to each other. They look absolutely fantastic. These are terrific. I really love them a lot. Very pointy too. So that is very cool. And you can get this into his batarang holding hand too. So that looks very good. I like that. We do get an extra set of wrist pegs in case you break any of those. And then here's looking at the head sculpt in the cow and it looks fantastic. I absolutely love it. Look at all those little wrinkles in there. Definitely has that leathery quality to it. Looks very good. I love how you can see all the little muscle definition in the neck and all that stuff. And I had to mention that there is a Sideshow exclusive that does come with a separate cowl uh, with all the mechanics underneath and all that. And it does come with a rifle. I don't have that version. I don't really need to get that version. I like this one just fine. But yeah, looking at this cowl, it looks great, man. Really digging it a lot. Like the armored Batman, he comes with different mouths. So you can see that this is the, I don't know, kind of angry mouth. And then here's the... Martha mouth right over there so you can switch those out then he also has two different sets of eyes uh, These ones he's looking straight forward This set of eyes he's looking slightly to his left and then this set of eyes He's slightly looking upward and switching these out uh, for the mouth part. It's not very difficult It's fairly easy, but for the eyes. It's a bit tricky uh, So you just want to lift this off over here the first time I did this this whole piece came off with the head and I was like, oh my god What am I gonna do but then you know, it's been okay since then and then you get this added tool Which I really like a lot uh, this little peg right here is for pushing forward the mouth section So you just push that forward and then you can just easily replace that with another mouth. Here we go, we got the Martha mouth, and that goes in there very easily, which is great. But switching the eyes out is a lot trickier than the directions tell you. Uh, what you wanna do is you wanna use this little fork to grab the T right over there on the inside. So you're not aiming for any of this over here, you're aiming for that right there. And I've actually found it easier to remove and switch the eyes with my finger without using this tool, but trying to use it with the tool right here, you can see that I'm I'm having a hard time doing that. So what I mostly use this fork piece for is placing the eyes in there. So just sticking my finger in there and pulling on one side and then angling it out and then it just drops out like that. I wanna use the ones where he's looking off to the left a little bit. So I'll just attach this right over here and then start to wedge that in underneath and then try to look for it in the face. And you can see I'm failing horribly. All right, take two. Let's see here. I can do this, I can do this. There we go. Okay, so placing it there and then shimming it with my finger and, ooh, that's what she said. And then getting that into place right there and that looks pretty cool to me, I dig that. Now, <laughs> that looks pretty funny, but another irritant with this figure is putting the head back on once you have all that done. You wanna really kinda tilt the cow back a little and make sure that you have it on there all the way. As you can see, I do not have it on there all the way. And sometimes I have to double check to make sure that the eyes are pushed all the way forward. And let's see here, you have to make sure you just get it in there correctly and I don't have it on there correctly at the moment. Yeah, you really need to make sure that the eye piece right there is not in the way of that back section because that's where it connects to this neck portion right here. And I do think that I'm getting that in the way. So yeah, that can be frustrating. There it goes. See, it took a little while, but yeah. So once you have everything positioned correctly, it will work. Now looking at the rest of the suit, I think this looks absolutely stunning. I do think it's a little too dark, so it's like a nighttime Batman, but man, it looks sick. Look at that, all the little scratches and everything right there. I like how the bat logo looks on the chest too. That's really cool. If I tilt this back a little, you can see the bat ears and everything. Very nice muscles on this too. The muscles look great, all super buffed. Uh, one thing I will say though is that like this padded rubbery suit over it does hinder some articulation. I feel like if um, they went with a little bit softer material, I don't know, it's still pretty squishy, but it's just kind of a harder rubber than I think it allows the figure to bend. But it does look great, you know, I have to give it that. Looking right here on the arms, that looks really cool. Love how the gloves look. I mean, you can really see the wonderful details right over there. That looks great, man. Very, very happy with that. I love the utility belt. Wow, a lot of nice color variation on that utility belt. 
looks very cool. And then we have the sexy bat butt. What is up with this bat butt, man? What? There's someone who was sleeping on the job on butt day, you know what I mean? I don't know. I expect Hot Toys has a butt day where everybody's got to work on the action figures butts, but yeah, um, and it's not made out of a soft material, it's a hard material, but yeah, for you man butt lovers, tell me if this is a thing, you know, like if, if, if that's pleasing to you or not. I mean, for me that looks weird, but I'm not a man butt lover, so yeah, man butt lovers, let me know if if this is something that works for you, because, um, yeah, I, I think that looks really weird. But anyway, looking at the legs, they look kind of weird, too. Uh, just the way the thighs are sculpted, it's just really weird. Uh, I, I know, like, the, the musculature seems to be following human anatomy fairly well. It's just, this sticks out a little too far, I think. I, I don't know. The, the legs just look a bit strange to me underneath the suit. The suit itself is very nice. One thing I have to mention is that if you leave the elbows bent for a long time, it will want to stick to itself, you know, and you'll start to get some stretchy things going on and it'll kind of pull on itself, so you do want to be careful with that. Moving right back down here to the legs once more. The boots look fantastic. I really like the boots. Very nice leathery boots. I like the gold bits right over here on the back. That looks really good. He has the steel toe boots, and then he does have treads at the bottom of his feet. And then we get the bat cape, which isn't necessarily my favorite part of the whole figure, but I do like it. I don't know, I just, I think this is a very cool looking bat cape. I wish it had a little bit more bendy wire in it. It says you can bend it around over here, but it doesn't really bend that much, just a little bit. And you can see, like, if I try to bend this piece right here, it doesn't really stay in position. So, you know, it looks all right. A lot of lines in there and everything. And it does have the brown dirt at the very bottom. So I think that's pretty cool. I do wish it maintained this texture on the inside of it, though. I don't like how it falls into this softer material. I kind of prefer this right over here. But anyway, still pretty cool cape. I like how it doesn't really get in the way. It's not too big. I think it's just the right size. Okay, so that looks pretty funny. But the articulation on this figure is pretty good. You can get his head looking up pretty far. You will get some gappage between the cowl and the suit, but that doesn't really bother me so much because usually if I have him looking up, I'm going to angle the camera in a way where you can hide that stuff. You can see a little bit of a gap right here though. That kind of bothers me a little bit. Anyway, you can move the head downward pretty far and you do get some head pivot right over here. And of course you can get him looking left and right like that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the shoulders are very well done. You can move the shoulders all the way outward. You can move them down. You can move them forward. I was actually able to get his arms moving all the way up, but again, I don't recommend leaving the figure like that for long periods of time. Uh, you do get a little bit of an armpit joint in there. You also get bicep rotation. He does have an elbow that bends at 90 degrees, and you can rotate the wrist side to side and hinge them up and down. You don't get much torso articulation, but it is there, and it's very stiff, so you can't, you can hear it move inside there, so it moves just a little bit forward, and it's mostly at the waist, and you can get it to move back, just so you get like one click forward and one click back. Uh, the side to side movement is very limited, it just moves that much, but at least it moves. The directions explain that you can remove the belt if you want to. Uh, he does have hip joints that move outward that much, I'm not going to stretch it out more than that. You do get a forward movement over there, and he can kick back just a little bit. You get an upper thigh movement, and then he has double jointed knees that bend in that much. And then you can rotate the foot side to side, it moves down some, up, and he does have ankle pivot. Now to measure out this Batman figure, you can see he stands fairly tall, I want to say he's at about the 13 and a half inch mark. Then for your Hot Toys Batman comparison, we have the Batman Returns Keaton Batman, and then we have the BVS Armored Batman over here as well. I feel like this one should have been a little bit taller, right? I feel like they're too close to the same height with all the armor and the big Big boots. I feel like this should have been a taller figure than this Batman. You can see how much taller the Batflack is compared to the Keaton Batman. Then here's the Hot Toys Batflack compared to the NECA Toys quarter scale Batflack. And you can see that the gray on this one is much lighter than the Hot Toys version. I do think that this is maybe a little too light, but I really think that they went too dark with the color gray for this bat suit. It, it's practically just a black bat suit. Then for your Sons of Martha comparison, we have the Batflack compared to the Man of Steel Superman. And Superman looks like he's just a little bit taller than the Batman figure, and that is not in scale. Uh, we know that this movie version of Batman is taller than Superman. However, in the comics, I'm used to seeing Superman taller than Batman, so this doesn't really bother me that much. Then here's our Hot Toys Batman compared to the Mafex BVS Batman, and then the Mattel San Diego Comic-Con exclusive BVS Batman right there. And I really think Mafex nailed it with the gray color.
color on that. I think that's the color that we should have seen on this Batman over here. And then here's Hot Toys Batman next to the Marvel Legends Big Time No Let Down Spider-Man. So I cannot wrap my head around why some Hot Toys collectors back up Hot Toys when they give us figures that don't have good articulation. Because when they do give us figures that have good articulation like this one, they are awesome. It really takes them up to another notch, especially putting it on a dynamic posing stand made by Hot Toys. Why would they make dynamic posing stands if we weren't supposed to put our figures in dynamic poses, right? And you get these really cool accessories and it just makes them more fun to have if you can have the figure posed using them, right? I think this looks very cool. I'm very pleased with this figure. And I honestly think Hot Toys rushed the Armored Batman, seeing as this is uh, MMS 342 and then the Armored Batman is 349 and that one came out first, so I have a strong feeling that that figure was rushed, thus we don't get as cool of a figure with the Armored Batman as we do with this regular Batman right here. But that's just my opinion anyway. Anyway, I'm happy with this figure, not happy with the lack of gray that we're getting on most of the suit, and I'm not happy with switching out the eyes. That's very irritating. But other than that, I think this is a fantastic piece. It may not be the definitive Batflack figure as we're getting more and more DC movies coming out, but I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please click the like button. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of this figure. Let me know what you think of this review. And if you have not subscribed already, please go ahead and click the subscribe button either down there or right up over there. Coming up, check out my previous video. You can see a photo gallery of images over at toynewseye.com and follow me on the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Links all in the description below. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Posing action figures. I'm posing action figures. I'm posing action figures every day. I'm posing action figures. I'm posing action figures. I'm posing action figures. It's okay. That's crispy. Here we go. I want to use the ones where he's. Whoa.